Hello. Um, I, wa I want to speak for about five minutes today about a Lebanese concept, um, a, a, a cop-out, if you will, of, of Lebanese uh, political language and political culture um, uh, called a manzume, a system, um, an inanimate object, right, uh, that a lot of uh, Lebanese apologists and, and euphemizers of uh, Hezbollah's colonization of Lebanon um, use as a senseless sort of drivel um, uh, to uh, to basically shift blame uh, from Hezbollah on uh, blame relative to, to the current co collapse of Lebanon as 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 a state, uh, right? And and uh, so so some of these folks who blame the Manzumi the system uh, argue that it's not right to lay the blame on Hezbollah for Lebanon's collapse. Uh, because there is a manzumi, there is a system that is a partner and an enabler of uh, this collapse. Well, yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, Hezbollah has no partners. Uh, uh, it has lackeys, it has collaborators, it has uh, mercenaries, and it has water boys. Uh, Lebanon is under occupation. Uh, ignoring the occupation of Lebanon and attributing its collapse to the political and economic mismanagement of this corrupt so-called manzumi, uh, that's what uh, uh, morons who gorge on unicorn milk uh, say. These are the kinds of pieties actually that the occupier, Hezbollah, expects you and wants you to be mouthing off. The minute you mention the word manzumi, to, to upon which to uh, uh, blame the collapse of Lebanon, you actually give yourself up as, as uh, the floozy of Hezbollah doing uh, Hezbollah's bidding. Uh, so enough of this um, uh, fairy magic dust. Uh, there's no manzume. There's a Hezbollah. Uh, the inability to um, call things by their names uh, can only be explained in this case um, by simple uh, moral uh, cowardice, um, uh, cultural uh, disorientation, uh, and plain uh, historical decay. Uh, I think that uh, there's no politics without history, uh, that history does not exist without a people making history, inventing history, writing history, uh, and that there there's no people uh, to make this history uh, without ideas, without ideals, without an identity uh, guiding them. And so to dismiss as a distraction the current debate in, in many circles among Lebanese today, the debate over the identity of Lebanon, uh, dismissing this uh, as a distraction is essentially uh, to submit to the nihilistic nothingness uh, that the colonial occupiers, Hezbollah, uh, wishes you to espouse. One of imperialism's main battles, wrote Edward Said, and I hate to quote this charlatan, but in this case, uh, he what he says makes some sense, so I'm happy to make an exception and mention his name, Valdemort. Uh, so what, what Said says is, is that the, one of the main, um, one of imperialism's main battles, he writes, uh, pertains to questions of culture, identity, history, memory, and who owns the rights to narrate those attributes of peoplehood. Uh, nations are narrations, uh, right side, and the power to narrate or block other narratives from forming and emerging is, the, is very important to culture and imperialism and constitutes one of the main connections between them. This is precisely the kind of power differential in Lebanon today. Hezbollah, the occupier, narrates your culture, and you, the servile colonial chattel submit and mouth off meaningless drivel about a manzumi and, and such like. Why is identity important? Identity is important because it rages against nihilism, what Hezbollah wants you to be doing, because it is identity that gives us um, people, uh, national heroes, uh, national stories, national meaning, national poets, in the case of Lebanon, the Charles Corms and Khalil Gibran and Fakhreddin and the patriarchs, the fathers of the nation, 
and, and the soldiers and the prophets and so on and so forth. Unfortunately today, those politicizing and economizing in Lebanon, meaning practicing politics and economics, uh, could not care less uh, about history and identity. They are at best historically illiterate, uh, at worst they're simply nihilistic slaves. Um, it is doubtful that those who play politics, work in politics, and work in um, and, and weigh in on the economy, uh, it is doubtful that they're guided by a political program or an economic program or a principle or a thought system. Uh, but I guess a program and a thought system uh, takes root uh, only when there is peoplehood, where there is a people, uh, where there is a history and identity and memory. And so the main crisis in Lebanon today is a crisis of identity. All else, economy, corruption, collapse, occupation, pollution, absence of sovereignty, all else is ancillary. You solve the identity crisis, all else gets resolved. You stop using the term manzume and name things by their names, all things get resolved. In other words, you cannot have a nation, you cannot have sovereignty, prosperity, independence, solidarity, cohesion, accountability, confidence, hopes, goals, dreams, fears. You can't have any of that without a national conscience and a consciousness. And there's no national conscience or national consciousness without a national identity. And you do not have a national identity if you don't share a collective imaginary, an, an imaginaire collectif, to borrow a phrase from Ernest Renan. If you don't have shared points of reference, historical, cultural, religious, linguistic, if you don't have those, how can you call yourself a state, let alone a nation? So please, no more manzumi. Ciao.